Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again and uh, welcome to another really cool tutorial and I know it's been a very long time since my last tutorial, uh, almost like two months, but I do apologize as always. I mean, I, I always say it, but I don't just, I, I just become lazy and don't do it. I mean, I've been busy too, but yeah, so I do apologize anyways and I'll try to be more consistent. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll make this uh, volcano uh, scene in uh, 3ds Max using Phoenix FD and we'll render it out using V-Ray. So this is something that I haven't seen anyone really done a tutorial about. So this is actually a shot that I've done for one of my short films, uh, which I've done like recently this year. So I'm just going to show you guys how to do this using Phoenix FD in 3ds Max. So let's get over it. And uh, here is the 3D scene that you can see it's pretty high res, actually, very detailed. So what I'm going to do is um, if I go over to the grid, it's actually very high res. So we've got about 1, 1.5 million total cells. And the thing about this is I'm using uh, the unit setup, I'm using meters, which is really crucial if you're doing uh, these uh, large scale, you know, real world type simulations. So that is the thing that I want to emphasize is that that is directly linked to your the quality of your simulations and your output. Uh, since in this case we're making an, a volcano and it's a very large scale one, so we need to set our unit setup to meters and make sure in the unit setup uh, one unit is one meter. So hit OK and OK. And since it is a very, it's like you have to, it's trial and error. You have to keep trying and keep playing around with the values to get the results that you're after. I'm just going to go through uh, the things that I've done for the simulation. And the main thing is, of course, the unit setup that should be meters. And for the simulator, I've actually used a sphere, which I can uh, I can right click and isolate. You can see that I've created a sphere and added a slice modifier to delete the bottom half, or you can just like select the polygons and delete it. And then I've created a Phoenix FD grid around the simulator, and I've simulated it. Uh, for about 200 or 300 frames which it really gets heavy at the end so what I'm gonna do is just for the preview purposes I'm gonna go into the preview uh, rollout and I'm going to set the detail reduction to 2 for now so that we can kind of navigate around it properly so let's go over the settings real quick the things that I've used for this is of course um, uh, for the grid, you know, you can start very low, you know, and then you can, you can just like increase it to get more quality, but going over to the main settings in the dynamic section. So let's get over to the dynamic section, which is the most important section that like, uh, it actually gives the look and everything to the simulation. So in the settings, I've actually used minus two, uh, for the gravity and the smoke buoyancy which is going to make the simulation go like the smoke rise up quickly. And uh, th those are the two main settings that it's going to, you know, if you want the volcano to go fast, you can, you can set it as, as needed. But in this case, I've used negative two for both of them. And for the cooling uh, point one, which is going to, you know, cool off the smoke uh, as it's simulated, when it simulates, it's pretty, it goes fast. And by the time it goes slow, and then for the vorticity, uh, actually, uh, I've, the most important value here is the large scale, which is I've set it to one, which is the maximum you can go, and that's going to make it. That's going to give it this large scale look because it's a volcano, and it is supposed to be large scale. And for the surface uh, smoke surface, I've used 0.5. You can use 0.5, 0.52, and the temperature surface 0.1. And randomize is actually going to make the randomize the smoke, give it a bit of a random swirly details. So I've used 0.14 and for the dynamics, 0.7. So you can set it to 0.7. And the quality, you can increase it, but I've set it to 10. 
And in this case, I've set steps per frame to one, but if you want to give, if you have time, you know, you can, you can, you can set it to like three and you'll get much more greater results for the smoke. And uh, these are basically the, the settings that I've used for the, in the dynamic section and for the output, um, make sure if you, if you want to render it up with motion blur, make sure you turn on velocity too, but I can, I can always do my motion blur in post in After Effects using these uh, Revision Effects plugins. So Revision Effects Build Smart Motion Blur. I can use that, but you can you can you can export the velocity channel too if you want to render it out with motion blur. And then for the uh, rendering, if I go into the volumetric options, uh, I've actually set the fire color you can see here since the smoke is very dense you can't really see the fire so if i go into the smoke opacity it's actually set to one which is very you know dense but if i lower it down you can see that we can we can see the fire too but uh you know you, you can change the color of the fire here you can increase the multiplier to make it more bright if you want to and the other thing is i've set the smoke opacity to one because I really want it to be this sort of dense you know volcano sort of smoke so that's basically it and uh, so if I even set this to like 0.9 you can see a bit of a detail here in the you know smoke is not that dense but one is like the maximum you can go I think yeah to get this uh, sort of very thick smoke so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to 0.95 and get a render of this frame and see how it looks. So I'm going to click on render. I've, I've set it to sequence, but I'm just going to go ahead to single, turn off the save file and click on render. And I'll be back when it's done. And by the way, uh, to show you the lighting part, if I cancel this, I've actually used a V-Ray light, V-Ray sun from this direction, which is pretty simple. So you can, you can, you know, you can go ahead into the preview for the Phoenix FD and uh, let's see here, preview and turn on GPU preview. So you can see the smoke in the viewport and it's, you can see it's pretty interactive. So I can, I can change the lighting and it will change the look of the simulation so you can you can just use a VR light and that's it and then I'm going to go and zoom in and click on render to get a frame out of this so I'll be back when this is done okay so our render is finished and as you can see it's very it's, it's looking good but the the detail in the smoke is not that much so that's why I've set the smoke opacity to one which is the maximum you can go in order to give it a very thick sort of smoky look, a uh, volcano look actually. And I'm going to set it to one. So now if I render this, you can see that it's going to be much more thicker, sort of a volcanic, is that a word? Volcanic sort of look. Yeah. So I'm just going to wait and I'll be back when it is done. Okay, so I'm back and this one took about 7 minutes and 18 seconds to render this and you can see we've got a lot of detail, a lot of those small volcanic volcanic details and I've done some color correction using the, you know, the color corrector in the V-Ray uh, frame buffer and it's looking pretty cool. So this is basically the effect that we did and you can, you can, you can, you know, navigate around and get get some really cool renders from it and then once you you're done you can you can bring in after effects or whatever compositing software that you're using and you can composite it add some color correction and stuff and this is basically the effect that we have done for today's tutorial and uh, uh, I know I haven't done a tutorial in a very long time but I will be doing some more Phoenix FD tutorials, so stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, FX Maniac, make sure to subscribe and like the videos and uh, tell me what you guys want next so that I can, I can do. Maybe I'll probably 
do this one next. So stay tuned for that. And uh, for now, as I always say, enjoy working.